All right, a topic, uh, fermentation, which is close to a lot of people's hearts because it's very, very important in the wine industry. Um, and so we're going to be looking at the basics behind fermentation. Nothing too detailed here. In this video, it's just the beginning uh, steps of the process and to get you the, the understanding of what's going on um, with more details to come later. All right, so fermentation is a chemical process which generates the production of ethanol through, the, through converting sugars into alcohol. Okay, so from a very basic description, sugars into alcohol. Specifically, we're going to be looking at glucose, right? But we can use sucrose, and that sucrose then is broken down into glucose, and it then gets converted. So if we go glucose here, and that glucose gets fermented by yeast. So we need yeast to do this. Now the reason why we need yeast is because the yeast contain the enzymes that convert the glucose into the alcohol. Okay, and there's lots of different enzymes in this process, but we're just going to write yeast. Now what a yeast is, a yeast is a eukaryotic organism. It's got a nucleus, and it's got a vacuole, it's got a mitochondria, okay? And so it is a eukaryote, and it contains the enzymes that we're going to use to um, convert glucose to sugars, okay? And we're not going to get to the details of how that happens, but we do need to realize that it has to be anaerobic conditions. And what does that mean? Well, you exercise people out there would know that anaerobic means you don't have oxygen. So a lack of oxygen is needed because if there's oxygen here, yeast will use that oxygen um, to respire and to grow and to reproduce. It won't use the oxygen to go through the process of making alcohol. So we have to limit the oxygen supply and have none. That'll force the yeast to anaerobically respire, sorry, anaerobically convert the glucose to the alcohol via fermentation and use the enzymes required to do that. We say that it also happens at 37 degrees Celsius as well. That is an optimal temperature for the enzymes activation. Okay, so let's write ethanol here. But it also produces carbon dioxide gas. So in a proper equation here, we have C6, H12O6. And we write the reaction conditions, and I'll do this in pink. And then, of course, we make ethanol and two carbon dioxides. So that's fermentation. Now, we need to also remember other conditions as well. So when you do this in the lab, you, you'll have some glucose or some sucrose. We're going to do another video on how you can do it simply at home. But <clears throat> this here, um, we, we've got to make sure the other things we put in there is we need to keep the pH low. Right? Keeping the pH low, what's the justification for that? Well, the thing is, is it kills bacteria. We don't want bacteria in this reaction flask. Okay, so uh, bacteria, which is everywhere, is a bacteria called Acetobacter, and Acetobacter makes vinegar, right? Ethanoic acid. So we will end up having vinegar tasting wine if we have Acetobacter in there. So we want to kill that, and therefore we need low pH, right? So it kills bacteria. We also want to make sure that we have a food source for the yeast, so we can put in some phosphates and sulfates. Um, putting in sulfur dioxide can also help as well, because that um, and um, that's looking pretty good. All right, so they're the conditions for fermentation. We know it goes from sugars to alcohol. You should be able to write that equation like that, and you should be able to justify the conditions that this undergoes. All right, so uh, in, the, in the next little section, I'm going to be writing out how you can set up a prac to do this. Um, and then, of course, we'll have a separate video and actually showing you how to do that prac. Okay, all right, I'll rub this out and we'll, uh, we'll get going with the uh, experimental setup. All right, the experimental setup. And having just rubbed that off, I realized I didn't tell you the name of the yeast. Now, the one yeast you can use is Saccharomyces ellipsoides. That was the one that was just written previously. And that is a um, that's a a yeast which is um, alcohol tolerant because what you've got to remember when you are um, fermenting you're going to have slowly increase the alcohol content of the flask which can kill 
yeast if they're not alcohol tolerant. Now, of course, a lot of yeast will die when you reach around about 14% or so alcohol. And so when, when you do this and create your alcohol content, you're going to have to go add another step afterwards, such as distillation, to separate and to purify. So you get a high concentration of uh, ethanol. So what we're going to do in another video is we're going to set up our experiment. And so what we're going to do is we're going to have some bottles, right? These are very poorly drawn bottles, I might say. Started with a bottle, ended up with a weird and wacky conical flask. Anyway, so we set up four of them. In the first one here, we're just going to have some water. And uh, we'll put some sugar in there as well. In the second one, we're going to add some water, of course, some sugar, and some yeast. Then in the next one, we'll just have some water and some yeast. And in the last one, just to add a bit of interest, we'll add double the amount of sugar. Okay, so we'll go water, two times sugar, and yeast. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll um, fill these up to the same height, so we have the same volume of water for each. Now it's got to be warm water, warm to hot water. The reason that is is because the yeast that we're going to be using is baker's yeast, and they need that hot water to dissolve the outer covering that the yeast are protected by, but also to activate them as well. Now, I've said warm to hot. Don't put them in boiling water because that will kill them and actually denature the enzymes and so forth. So you may have to try what sort of temperature. But anyway, we're going to, you know, fairly warm water. And so this one here is a control. This is control number one. And this is control number two. And then we're changing the independent variable here is the amount of sugar and to see how it affects the um, CO2 production. So why have we got two controls? Well, we want to make sure that any CO2 produced is not affected by the water, right? So we've got water and we've got sugar. And we're showing here that, that it's the enzyme that's needed to ferment the sugar. The water doesn't ferment it by itself. So we should expect there to be nothing happening in there. If we think about control two, we've got the water and the yeast. Well, we need the sugar as the reactant to ferment. And so we should expect nothing to happen in that as well because you just got water and you got yeast. If we get bubbles coming from there, we've got a problem. All right, it's telling us something a bit, a bit weird going on. But this is what we need to do when we set up an experiment is to ensure that we have controls to test that the reason why we're getting fermentation is because of the yeast, the enzymes in the yeast, and the sugar. Okay, so it makes our um, experiment more valid, more valid. We're testing what we're supposed to be testing. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to place balloons on the top. Well, we'll measure the mass first. Okay, we'll measure the mass first, so we'll get a mass reading. All right, we'll measure the mass reading of all of them. Then we'll put a balloon on just to capture the CO2, just for fun. Right, so we'll put a balloon on. It's going to overhang the top there. It looks like Santa's little hat. Okay, and then and we would expect that um, within this one here that should start to produce some gas. And then since it's got twice the sugar, it would make sense if it made twice the volume of gas. Now, obviously, if we were to measure its mass now, there would be no mass change if we did things right. Because in the universe, it says the law of conservation of mass. What you have at the beginning should equal what you have at the end. Since we haven't lost anything, then the mass should be the same. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll ca capture this, take it off, Try to keep the CO2 in there because it would be nice to see if we can bubble that through lime water to prove that the gas is CO2. If lime water turns milky white, then we know it's CO2 gas. So we'll take the CO2 from that. Once we do that, we should expect that the mass of that and that should go down. Okay. Um, and then we can record the mass. Now we can take the balloons off there and place them on the side and see if that's also the case. So we will record the mass change of both of those one after we've done the test for lime water because remember we want the balloon next to it as well right no co2 but we want the balloon and then we can see 
and graph the change in mass. So that's the experiment we're going to be doing. Okay, hope it makes sense. Write it all down so and see if you can work out the dependent, the independent variable, the controlled variables, and the control. All right, and we'll talk about those when we actually do it. All right, see you then.